everyone, Mr. E here with another hands-on 3D printer review. And in this one, we're looking at the 10 things that I love and hate about the Lulzbot Sidekick 3D printer. So before we dive in, I just want to thank you for taking a minute to watch this video. And while I do have a solid relationship with Lulzbot, as I'm the author of the Lulz Lessons Free Curriculum for Education, these thoughts are my own. This really is my Lulzbot Sidekick 3D printer. So all of these thoughts are things that I've experienced after owning a Sidekick since it originally was released in 2021. I also want to make it completely clear that I do not hate this 3D printer. In fact, I love it. But that being said, no printer is perfect. So let's dive into the 10 things I want to talk about. The first is a love, and that is the customizability of this 3D printer. Like all those bots, you can change the bed, swap the heads, and modify the printer as you please through open source hardware. But unlike any other Lowe's bot, you can customize and configure your printer right from the factory. You can choose the color you want, tool heads, and accessories to add up to your desired price point tailored to your specific specific needs. The second one is also a love, and that is the size of this 3D printer. Originally, when this was released in 2021, you could order this in two different sizes, the 289, which had a build volume of approximately 289 cubic inches, and the 747 that I have here, which has a build volume of approximately 747 cubic inches. But since 2023, Lulzbot only allows you to purchase the 747, and personally, I think that's fine. The build size of the 747 is nine by nine by nine, and one quarter inches and I find that fits most of my needs. The third thing on my list is the price and that's kind of a love-hate. As mentioned, you can configure the Lulzbot Sidekick ranging from just under $1,000 to around $1,500 or $1,600 if you configure it with a bunch of options. For this price, you do get a really awesome performing 3D printer and compared to the Lulzbot lineup, this is cheaper than the Mini and bigger and it's about a third of the price of any of the bigger Tazes even though it's very nearly the same size. So that's good. Good, but there are a lot of other printers that offer similar performance and size for quite a bit less money, but I do wish that the price put this at a slightly more competitive point for a lot of other users compared to its closest competition. The next thing that I love are all of the different calibration and tuning features built into this printer that are just so easy to use. This printer is equipped with a BL Touch Auto Bed Leveling Pro, which is pretty common, and it works like a charm regardless of how dirty your nozzle is. There's also loads of built-in features to tune, like Auto Z Align, which will align the X-axis gantry automatically, as well as tuning bump stops and motor feedback or Z offset right in the user interface. So you don't need to connect to a computer or a Send any detailed G-code commands to tune this. And these gears all over the printer here and on the top aren't just for aesthetics, they're actually how you adjust and tighten the belt tension. The next thing I don't love are all of the 3D printed TPU cable covers on every single harness on the Lulzbot Sidekick. If you're going to plug things in and leave it, this will never be an issue and in fact they look really great but I often pack and move my printer around and these covers make unconnecting and reconnecting things a bit of a hassle. On that note, number six is the portability of this printer and I love it. In another video, which you can find here somewhere, I talk about how I think the Lulzbot Mini 2 is the best 3D printer for travel and portability and I literally turn it upside down to 3D print with and I still stand by that's my favorite option, but the Sidekick comes close. The way that the bed can detach and remount and hang inside the frame and how the controller box and screen flip in is really a beautifully designed and well thought out feature that might be one of the most underrated features of this printer. Something I don't love is the screen. Now don't get me wrong, it works fine and it's very easy to use and if you're another Lulzbot user, you're coming from a very common RepRap style printer, it's gonna feel very comfortable and there's nothing wrong with that. But as I mentioned, there's a lot of printers in this price point that are close in competition, so I wish that the screen was just a little bit cleaner, a little bit more intuitive, maybe a little bit more shiny and flashy, just to make this a little bit more competitive with a lot of other printers that you might be considering. Now, the number eight thing doesn't bother me personally, but I know a lot of other users ask for this, and again, it's something else that might be featured on competitive 3D printers, and that is built-in network connectivity. Like most Lowe's bots, you can download and save your G-code files to an SD card, which is located right here, but a lot of the competition uses USB drives or if it has built-in Wi-Fi or networking capability. If you really want this, it's not that hard to load up a Raspberry Pi with OctoPrint and connect this with Cura, and you can even mount the Raspberry Pi right to the controller box, but again, I know a lot of users wish that this had something built in, 
and that might be a feature that puts you off. Last two are my favorite. So number nine is just how approachable this 3D printer is. What I mean by this is that more and more today's 3D printers are black boxes designed to look like consumer tech goods, which is cool because that means more and more people are buying 3D printers and putting them into their home, and I'm a huge fan of that. But these black boxes often are sealed and you don't know how to tune things and when something goes wrong, when something needs to be calibrated, which it always does after long-term use, it's really difficult to know where to start or even what to touch or not to touch, let alone trying to find replacement parts. The Sidekick's open design looks really cool and it's super functional and it brings me back to classic RepRap 3D printers but with modern features and user friendliness. All of the 3D printed parts can be downloaded and modified thanks to Lulzbot's open source hardware philosophy and it's just really an enjoyable 3D printer to work with and you can kind of understand how it works just looking at it. And number 10, my last thing and my favorite thing is just its real world performance and usability. Common printer problems like jams and faulty calibration is rare even though I constantly move these sidekicks around to classroom and events that I do every single year. The print quality is definitely above average and like any low spot you can print with 175 or 285 filament as well as rigid, flexible, PLA, carbon, whatever you want right out of the box. Which again is why even though this printer might not be perfect, it's just become one of my favorite 3D printers you can buy today and usually the one I recommend because for me, it's kind of the best all around with all the different features when you compare quality, price, performance, reliability, and more. Thanks for watching and of course, please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for future videos on my channel.